It's said that one of the British Navy's greatest triumphs was that of the Battle of the Nile. The battle took place between the 1st and the 3rd of August 1798. However, two years prior to this, the British Navy had retreated from the Mediterranean altogether. It was now time to return under the command of Lord Admiral Nelson. Intelligence had led the British fleet to believe that the French, led by Napoleon, was on the move in the Med towards Egypt. Ultimately, their goal was to invade Egypt and travel east to divide British possessions. Nelson was to spend two months searching for this fleet and despite its reputed size, often missed them by just a few hours. Luck and persistence paid off, and upon visiting Egypt for a second time, they stumbled across the French fleet. Despite the French believing they had a good defensive position, it wasn't to be. Nelson and his captains soon overcame the French fleet, their admiral being killed amongst numerous other casualties. What is said to be an extremely important aspect of this battle was the positioning of the ships. Nelson's fleet positioned themselves between the roped line of French ships and the coast. This meant he could completely sandwich them, both med and coast side. And it's that positioning of those ships which brings us here today. After Nelson's death in the Battle of Trafalgar, a local estate owner, Charles Douglas, here just west of Amesbury, decided to commemorate Nelson's death. He did so by planting a number of clumps in the exact position at a certain time of the Battle of the Nile. Unfortunately for us, perhaps the best position to see these clumps is from the air. And whilst we've just tried to get the drone out, as you can hear, it didn't really like the wind and wanted to return home. So we are going to do exactly that. Okay, so. We made it back despite the bitter cold and the high wind um, which didn't give us the best audio on that so apologies for that so we filmed um, here's a couple of old maps we filmed that in the location of the Nile clumps obviously um, which is halfway between Amesbury and Stonehenge another old map again from the 60s this particular one it's even got the old Amesbury railway on it so it is possibly a little bit earlier than that um, and again halfway between Amesbury and Stonehenge. The A303 in its current state isn't on here. It goes across there. Um, and again, we filmed on this pathway here, uh, just probably closer to Stonehenge and Amesbury, but you get the idea. So it's not until we have a look at a couple of um, old map overlays on the computer. The first one we want to have a look at is a current satellite image, uh, courtesy of Google Maps. Now, on this satellite image, you can clearly see the clumps, um, quite a few of them, and they all head uh, east of the pathway that we were situated on down towards Amesbury. If we have a look at this overlay, which is a, a courtesy of side-by-side -side maps, you'll see in particular they're, they're very well marked. One in particular has the boat-shaped uh, underside as represented by a clump of trees. So presumably that means it was intentional. So we had a small theory that the size and shape of the clumps could potentially represent either French or British ships. As you can see, some of the clumps are square and some of them are circled. I haven't been able to piece that puzzle together yet. If you've got any ideas, please leave them in the comments below. So if we take that image of the Google Maps as of now, and we overlay this image, which is a particular time in the battle, I guess that's as close as we're going to get to the Charles Douglas representation of the battle. Uh, doesn't quite fit, but you can understand what they were trying to do with that representation. 
So that concludes uh, this episode of Secrets of the A303 where we learnt how a 200 year old battle uh, is represented on a section of land just to the west of Amesbury, pretty much on top of the A303. Thanks for watching. Give us a like and a subscribe if you enjoy the videos. There'll be plenty more to come. Can we leave that in the video?